Hi everyone, it's me Darlene and welcome to Discovering Knitting. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to tell you a little bit how I run things. If you're a regular, you already know how things are done. Usually on my channel, I start off with my yarn hauls, if there are any, and then I lead into my completed projects and my works in progress, and then I end with a little bit of chit chat. Now on this episode, in the chit chat portion, I have a few items I'd like to show you that I purchased and that I've tried out. So stick around if you into that kind of thing. If not, the yarn haul comes first, the completed projects and the whips are second, and then I go into the chit chat. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, welcome back. And make sure that you click like, subscribe, and always leave a comment. If you want to see something as a new knitter, explained or a tutorial, I'll eventually try to do tutorials. Just drop it in the comment section and I'll do my best to accommodate you. So. This is episode five of Discovering Knitting, and let's get into it. Now, I had no intention of going to any stores shopping for yarn because I had just done a yarn haul. I have enough yarn. I said that was enough. I'm not doing all these yarn hauls because I have too much yarn and only two hands to knit. However, the last time I went shopping, I'd received a 50% off coupon at Joanne Fabrics. And Hobby Lobby had a 30% off sale on all their yarns. Michael's had some sales. Michael had buy one, get one free. Um, I wasn't able to go to Michael's because I went while I was working. I took a break and went to Hobby Lobby and Joann's. So I didn't get a chance to make it to Michael's. I'm not going to Michael's this weekend. I'm going to be happy with what I had. So let's get right into this yarn haul. Um... Joann's, I went to get double pointed needles to practice doing double pointed needles, knitting in the round on double pointed needles. And Joann had a sale on their Big Twist yarn, regularly priced $3.49 on sale for $1.50 a skein. Now, let's get started. big twist this is and i got like two four one, two, three, six colors i believe six different colors so this is the big twist yarn that they had on sale um it takes a us8 knitting needle a ush slash eight crochet hook the medium weight is four this color is varsity orange and it's a hundred percent acrylic so I don't know if you can see that orange, but I got two of these, big twists. So they were $1.50 each. I got two of these. And also, and the specs are the same, so I'm not gonna reread the specs for you, but um, I'll give you the color. This color is Varsity Green. And it feels really good, it's not rough. It's not super soft, but it's not rough either. This is Coral which I think it's a neon pink. And this color is light green. So if you can see where I'm going with this, I'm gonna to attempt to do a blanket, green, light green, neon pink and orange, and um, see how that goes so those are the skeins of yarn that i got i got two of the varsity green oh and it's 380 yards per skein 170 grams so i'm going to put these back in my bag because my cat is lurking and if any of you have animals you know how animals are with yarn and i don't want cat hair or anything on it even though i'm using it for me so, I got two of these in the big twist, $1.50 each at Joann's. I got two in the light green. Two in what I call neon pink, not varsity pink. <laughs> and I got two in the varsity orange. 
which is a neon orange to me. So, $1.50 per skin. So that was $12 Ooh. for two, four, six, eight. Eight skeins of yarn for $12. You can't beat that with the stick. So, that was Joanne's. Now, I did go to Hobby Lobby first because of their 30% off sale. And I thought I was just going to buy regular stuff off the rack. But I got to the clearance section. And if you guys go to Hobby Lobby, you know that clearance section can be a hit or miss. It can be gold or it can be crap. So, I was able to find pretty good finds in the clearance section. So, I didn't even need to buy any regular yarn. This yarn was on sale, on clearance for $1.74 a skein. This is Baby B, Cozy Cutie, Giggle Me This. And the color is Giggle Me This, that's the name of the color. It's a fine weight of two. It takes a US4 knitting needle and an E4 crochet hook. It's 100% polyester. And this is 741 yards. So I don't know, I'm trying to make sure my camera picks up all the colors in it. So of course, the only thing I would logically make with this would be a baby blanket. So that's what I'm gonna do. So they only had two skeins left. And I got both skeins. So um, this was a great deal because I think these are, these are regularly $7. Um, and I got it for $1.74, 741 yards. So this is about 1400 yards and I can make a decent sized baby blanket with it. And I think I'm going to do that because my sister, she is pregnant with twins. Sorry. And then I found this, this is, I love this yarn. It was $1.25 a skein. I got three skeins. And it is 100% acrylic. It's 252 yards per skein. It takes a US knitting needle eight and a I9 crochet hook. And this color is called Sweet Serenade. And the weight is a medium four weight. I like this color because I figured it'll make a cute hat. It can make a cute little um, sweater, like a button up sweater. It can make a cute set of mitts a cow it, it just it just looks wintery and just i don't know i just love it but um i got three skeins of these and they were $1.25 a skein so i love this yarn and it also has a free pattern of a hat and a scarf you can't make so i might try to do that next i got Baby B's Sugar Pom Pom. Now I've gotten this before and it was called Dots. And so because I still have some of the dots left, I got this because I could combine this color with the dots, which was a pink and blue combination and try to get something really cute out of it. This color is Little Darling. It's 55 yards. It takes a US 15 knitting needle or NP 15 crochet hook. It's 70% acrylic, 17% polyamide and 13% polyester and it's a super bulky six and like i said i only got one skein but if you look at some of my previous videos i, I got um something similar the same thing but it was called dots it was a little bit different in coloring the dots were a different color but i think they'll mix well when i knit something together with it also since i got double pointed needles and it wasn't until i got home i found out i got the wrong size double pointed needles i'm gonna attempt to make socks and so of course i got socks yarn for socks and these skeins all of these skeins were a dollar 25 a piece regular price 4.99 they are a fine weight of two they take a us two knitting needle and an e4 crochet hook it is let's see if i can find out what type of material it is give me one moment it's 235 yards 93 percent acrylic and seven percent it says pbt so i don't know what that means but i got two skeins in this color Uh, 
Um, I also, now this is a super fine one. And this takes a knitting needle one or D3 crochet hook. It is 235 yards, 93%, the tag's covered. 93%, I'm gonna assume acrylic and 7% of the fiber. So this color is so cute and fun. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy making socks if I don't get frustrated. These also were $4.99 and they, I got them for $1.25 a piece. This is super fine too. It takes a US 2 uh, knitting needle and an E4 crochet hook. 93% acrylic, 7% PBT. And if you're a uh, seasoned knitter and you know what PBT stands for, please put it in the comment box. I greatly appreciate that. So I got two skeins of these also. And all of these skeins are regularly priced $4.99 and I got them for $125. I think this would make a good boy sock because of the browns and the colors as opposed to this one that would make like a good girl sock. But there's no really color associated with gender so I guess it doesn't matter but and I got this one. It was the only one there, but I figured I was gonna put it back, but I said, no, you can practice the double pointed needles with this. So I got this skein. It was regularly $6.50. I got it for $1.99. And uh, these tags, they cover everything up. Look, all the specs are just covered. So it's not me. It's 166 yards. It's 25% nylon, and that's all it says on this side. Oh, yeah, 75% washable wool, 25% nylon, um, 166 yards, and this was made in Turkey. And it takes, sorry. It takes a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, Mm. and a number three knitting needle and it's a super fine one so and this will be a practice yarn because I've only got one skein of this and that's my yarn haul and at Hobby Lobby the total came up to $20 not bad Hobby Lobby not bad at all. So, now that we've gotten that out the way, the yarn haul, I can put my bags. I tell you, I'm going to stop yarn shopping because this is just too much. But I don't think I spent that much. Last yarn haul I did, um, I got $125 or $175 worth of yarn for like $44. This was $30 together, so I don't think I did too bad, but I'm not doing any more yarn hauls for a while. We'll see. So anyway, um, also at Joann's, because Hobby Lobby didn't have any, I picked up some bamboo double-pointed needles. These are a number seven, which are pretty thick, because all the socks they take one two or three bamboo needles i didn't know that and these bamboo needles aren't cheap they're like 8.99 per pack and so since i didn't know what to get i just got something that was kind of thick so i could practice on but now that i know i'm gonna need like a one two and three i'm gonna go back and get them and i had a 50 percent off coupon so it took 450 off of the 8.99 so i'm gonna practice um double pointed needles this weekend so i also got this and also at hobby lobby when i was walking out the lady said choose a free gift they had a table laid out um in the front of the store after you paid for your items so the free gift i chose was this desk calendar um regularly 5.99 and then they had a discounted price of 2.97 and i got it for free so that was cute of joanne's i think they're really trying to clear out everything because 
Halloween, um, Thanksgiving, and Christmas is coming. So they're trying to get rid of all their fall inventory from last year, I'm assuming, or all the fall inventory that came in before COVID because COVID came in February. So February, January, February, that's when they put all their fall stuff from last season on sale. But because they couldn't do it, I think they just have too much stock because Hobby Lobby just cleared out all their old stock and they were restocking things um, when I went there last week and their shelves are full now and they still have yarn 30% off. So I just think they just have too much stuff. So, which leads people like me to be there every week to shop. So, all right, another thing I got, which I'm super excited about, I ordered two books. I have this website that I go to and I recommend, even if you're looking for a knitting book, crocheting book, or a romance novel, or horror, fantasy, sci-fi, fiction, whatever, thriftbooks.com is this amazing website where they have a lot of books, $10 or less. All the books I've purchased from there have been $7 or less. This book I purchased was $5. And this is Getting Started Knitting Socks by Ann Bud. Now, as you can see, the price on this, $18. Even the sticker price, $18. I paid $5 for this book on thriftbooks.com. And it has a variety of socks and patterns for the socks. See? that that's to make these socks it's the full pattern so this book is over 130 pages long and it gives you patterns for every kind of socks you can think of to make so I think this is going to be a great asset to me it also gives diagram on how to measure your foot I don't know if I did that really fast or not I'm sorry and um it also gives you how you prep the legs and everything. So I thought this was a great resource in order to start knitting um, socks and using double pointed needles. So I couldn't pass it up for $5. I also ordered one for gloves and um, wristless, wrist warmers, not wristless warmers, but wrist warmers. And um, I just think it's great. And Ann Budd, is a, she's a book editor for Interweave and formerly manager editor of Interweave Knits. She's the author of The Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns and The Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. And she co-authored Wrap Style, Lay Style, and Bags, Bag Style. And she lives in Boulder, Colorado, interweavebooks.com. So I purchased this and I wanted to show you guys this amazing, amazing purchase thriftbooks.com five bucks now if you watch my last video not the yarn haul video but the yarn the video where I talk about finger condoms my finger condoms arrived and let me just pull those out Here. I got them off Amazon and people also use these for guitars, which I didn't know. And my finger was destroyed. Like literally I pulled a chunk of skin off. You guys can see it. I mean, my fingers are just horrible, <sighs> but it's worth it. So these are the finger condoms. This is what protects your finger while you're knitting. And they come in a bag like this. I paid like $6 for this. And they come in various shapes and sizes. And they are perfect because I'm no longer cutting myself. So these, this is what a finger condom looks like. Now this is one for a guitar pick, but they have some in Michaels and Hobby Lobby that are for knitting, but anything that protects your finger is good. So I wanted to show you guys that. Also, one more thing, and then we'll get to the completed projects. I kind of went out of order, but I'm middle age. We'll let it slide. I found this great pattern 
on Ravelry.com. And if you're not on Ravelry, Ravelry is a great resource for new knitters who want to learn various things from more seasoned knitters. It's also great for seasoned knitters. It's kind of like a Facebook for knitters and crocheters. Um, I'm on Ravelry. My Ravelry name is the number 365-B-R-K-L-Y-N. 365, the numbers, B-R-K-L-Y-N. I'm on Ravelry. I have the work that I've put up there. I have some patterns that I did the work with, and it's just a great little community. And when you upload your stash of yarn that you get, Ravelry automatically picks out the type of yarn and it gives you patterns that go along with it. They have tons of free patterns and tons of paid patterns. So I'm making a bulky waffle hat for one of my coworkers and I found this pattern on Ravelry. And so this is the hat I'm going to attempt to make for her because I made a waffle scarf, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. And this is why I'm going out of order, but I just want to tell you guys, Ravelry.com is a great resource for patterns. So, let me show you the whips now. I feel like this video is all over the place, so I started it like six times and stopped, so you guys just gonna have to deal with it. I love you. Thank you for your patience. I feel aged. This hat is one of the completed hats that I was making for my coworkers. I don't think I showed it to you yet, but I am super proud of it. The pattern is on Ravelry. And I just think it's a great hat, a great winter hat. And as you can see, it has a diamond, pat diamond pattern to it. And I love the little sparkle, sparkle, the razzle dazzle. So this is one of the completed projects I worked on for my coworkers, which I'm sending out. And if you look at episode four or three, I believe you'll see the scarf that I made to go with this. Also on episode three or four, there's a scarf that goes with this one. It's another hat I made for my coworker and I got it from a pattern off of the yarn. So let's try this one on. As you can see, I am so proud of myself. Like I, you guys, if you've been watching my past videos, you saw the flawed, the errored, the trash that came from these hands. Now look at me. I know what I'm doing a little bit. So this was a great hat I made with the scarf and the pattern um, I showed you on the last video, but this is also for my coworker. And my last coworker, the one who I'm making the waffle hat for, I made her a waffle scarf. And the, she liked this yarn, but I believe for the pattern, this yarn was too busy. But you tell me what you think. I gave it a little fringe also. But this is the waffle stitching I did that came from the Lion Brand yarn I purchased. And I just think the waffle stitches aren't coming through because the pattern is so busy. So let me know what you guys think. I mean, it's a great yarn. It's, it's, it's really stretchy, but the stitching is just tight because that's how the yarn is made. But you really can't see the detail of the waffle stitching because this, pat, this yarn is so freaking colorful. But I did a good job on it. I like it. And also, if you want to know how to waffle stitch, the pattern for waffle stitching is on my Ravelry account, 365brooklyn.com, so check it out. Or if you want to know the pattern for this one, or the pattern for this one, it's all on Ravelry. Okay? So, let's get into it. What are we going to chit-chat about today? Let me check my notes. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about knitting some of these projects and I haven't showed you everything because this is just for me I made this um, wrist warmer for myself 
and I just finished. And I did a stocking knit, stocking knit stitch on purpose. You can't even see the razzle dazzle in it. I don't know why, but it's got razzle dazzle, razzle dazzle. So with this one, I just knitted about 10 and a half inches and I stitched them together on this side. So this was just me doing something to switch up what I was working on. I don't know, yeah, you can see the razzle dazzle a little bit, but it's really prevalent looking at it. But, and I'm working on the second one, but I just wanted to get a break from scarves and hats. And so in order to get a break and do something fun where I didn't have to worry about a pattern, I started a wrist warmer. And I'm working on the second one now which is right here and i always leave off on the pearl one so i can continue to use the same sticky so what i did um so it wouldn't roll up i started off with a garter stitch just about four or five rows of garter stitching and then i did a stocking knit stitch and the stocking knit stitch is a simple Pearl one all the way down, knit one all the way down, pearl one all the way down, knit one all the way down. So that's something I'm working on just for me to give me a break um, in between making scarves and hats for other people. It just it isn't as stressful. I don't have to worry about getting it perfect because it's just for me. Now, as far as the hat for my coworker to go with the colorful scarf, I just started the round. I just did the cast on. And I'm gonna work on that this weekend. So I just started knitting in the round. Um, I mean, I just cast on in the round. I'm gonna start knitting in the round this weekend for her project. So, whenever you knit, and the reason I brought up the hat that I'm gonna start knitting in the round is because I wanna talk about knitting to a pattern. Whenever you knit to a pattern, you have to pay attention you can't rely on memory because one thing I've noticed, and that's why I had to do the purple hat again with the pom-pom on it, because I was knitting while doing other things. I would, instead of just watching TV and knitting and focusing on the pattern, I would knit around, get up and go do something else and try to remember where I left off. Was it a knit one or a pearl one and come back to it? Doesn't work. When you knit anything, unless you're comfortable with knowing where you're gonna start, where you're gonna stop, always knit in a quiet place. Always knit somewhere where you know you're gonna have an hour or two or three to just sit there and knit and not think about anything but what you're knitting and just watching TV as white noise or having it as white noise because it will save you from having to frog stuff back or to tink back. Um, when you start knitting a hat in a round as a beginner, for me, use a stitch marker. A lot of knitters don't use stitch markers because they're used to knitting in the round and they just go by nine inches or 10 inches or however many inches, two inches of ribbing, nine inches of the pattern and go in and go forth. But when you first start, use, get in the habit of using a stitch marker because with more complicated hat patterns you're going to need to count your rows and you're going to need to know what row you're actually on so use the stitch marker count your rows with that stitch marker and stick to the pattern because when you have a pattern that says row one knit pearl row two pearl knit row three repeat per, row one you're going to have to know what row you're on and those stitch markers really do help guide you the best way to start a hat in the round for me. Now for me, starting a hat in the round, I prefer casting on straight needles and then transferring it over to the round. The reason I do this is because it's just easier to count when you cast on. And let me give you an example. Casting on, you see this here? This is, when you're trying to count, it's difficult to do because you're counting on wires, it's not steady, and you could lose where you are in the counting process. 
when you're using a needle, a, a needle like this, the cast on is not going to move. So you can easily just count your cast on. So I always cast on in the proper size, of course, on a straight needle, and then I knit it on the round. That's my preferred way of doing it. If you're comfortable with doing it um, all on the round, that's fine. But when you're casting on 86, 52, 68 stitches, you're not going to want to cast on in the round and try to count it and think in the whole time because I'm paranoid. Oh, did I miscount? Did I miscount? Did I miscount? I know on the straight needle, I will always have the right count. And then I just transfer it over to the round. That's me. Another thing also with knitting hats that I found out through trial and error, most hats, except for beanies probably, let's say 10 knitting needle, always start on a US 9 in order to do the ribbon because it gives your hat a tighter circumference around your head. And you're gonna want the hat a little bit tighter on your head because the top of the hat is always loose. Unless it's a beanie, you can use the same size knitting needle that the pattern calls for because a beanie is supposed to be tight all the way around. But with a slouch hat or a normal size hat, always go down one needle size when you're knitting the rib which is usually the beginning of the hat. And then after you knit the rib stitch, let me just show you. After you knit the rib stitch, this, then you can use the larger size needles that the pattern recommends for the other stitching. And that will give your hat a tighter fit and it won't be loose like that first hat I knit. I don't know if I showed you the first hat I knit, but that hat came down to here. It was just that loose. <laughs> so, and that's another thing. Most hats start off with a knit stitch. So, with a rib stitch. A rib stitch is usually just knitting pearls and then purl and knits. And most hats start with that stitch because it gives a tighter fit on the crown, on the base of your head. My perfect hat pattern, I get my hat patterns from... Uh, cro a crocheter and knitter called Ruby Knits Crochet and T-E-J-I-D-O-S. I'm going to put her link, uh, not her link, I'm going to put her YouTube name up, but she's a, YouTube, a YouTuber in Canada and she does videos in English and Spanish for crochet and knitting products and her YouTube name is Ruby Knit Crochet y Tios. And she always has hat patterns, she has scarf patterns, she has everything you can think of. Now that's where I used to go for my patterns until I bought my pattern books. But she's a great, great resource, great resource. And that's it for Chit Chat. <laughs> so I apologize if this video was all over the place. I was trying to get everything in. Like, subscribe, comment, said, hey, this video was crap, you were all over the place. That's fine. I agree with you. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Thank you for clicking on for two minutes and then clicking back off. Thank you for staying throughout the whole thing. I appreciate you. Until next time, bye.